It's really exciting because I know I'm gonna improve leaps and bounds over my last version, not only in the acquisition process, but in the image processing skills I've learned since the last time I shot it two years ago. Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones and welcome back to the Astro Backyard. Tonight is a clear Friday night here in the city. I've got a bright moon to deal with later, but that's okay because I'm shooting in narrow band. I've got a nebula target in mind that I haven't shot in about two years and I really haven't done it justice in my mind. I'm not so proud of my last version, so I wanna update it with my new image tonight and I think I've got a really great combo to do it justice. Some wine. We got something going on tomorrow or what? But holy, oh, you didn't have to get that much if just I'm eating it. That's a lot of macaroni salad. Oh, <laughs> I didn't want to run out. So if you're seeing a mustache on me right now, I'm seeing it for the first time too in the reverse display screen on this camera because I'm doing this thing where, where I grow my mustache a bit longer and trim the rest of the beard. It's like a, it's a thing. I've seen guys do it and it looks kind of cool. Uh, but on me, I'm just starting to look like uh, men really sticks out on camera. Um, I feel like I'm looking at a different person, so uh, I don't think this is going to last. Anyways, so the combo I was talking about is the QHY268C one shot color camera cooled with the Optolong L Extreme filter. So that's a duo narrowband filter to capture an H alpha and O3, which is a great option for shooting the Wizard Nebula. NGC 70, oh, what is it? Sev, seven, NGC 7380, which is really the open cluster, but the Wizard Nebula is a really great nebula in Cassiopeia. It's in a great spot tonight, so I should be able to soak in lots of time on it. I had one of those moments, and I'm sure a lot of you have had it, where uh, I wanted to share a new photo on Instagram, and I wanted to share something that was relevant to right now, that's in the sky, just a previous version to get excited about it. And the Wizard Nebula is something that's great right now in the Northern Hemisphere. It's a great target. So I looked up my last version and I was like, that can't be my best version of the Wizard Nebula to date. And uh, sure enough, it was. So I'm like, okay, I need to reshoot this ASAP. And tonight's the night. But whenever that happens, it's not a discouraging moment. It's really exciting because I know I'm going to improve leaps and bounds over my last version, not only in the acquisition process, but in the image processing skills I've learned since the last time I shot it two years ago, or even last year. Uh, you would think by looking at it, it looks like I shot it about five years ago. Anyway, I'm gonna improve on it tonight. Man, the Wizard Nebula is not in this book. It didn't even crack the top 100, which is surprising because it's a great nebula. I actually, I think I said earlier that it's in Cassiopeia, but it's actually in Cepheus. I looked up exactly where it is and I don't feel so bad because it's really a lot closer to Cassiopeia. Sorry about that, it's in Cepheus. It's actually an open cluster with associated nebulosity. So chances are in the astrophotography world that you're gonna be photographing it for that nebulae element of it rather than the star cluster itself. So NGC 7380 is the catalog number if you're not familiar with it. So there's a lot of nebulae in the night sky that have these names, the Pelican Nebula, the Cave Nebula, and I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the times I just don't see it. I don't see the object they were named after. The Wizard Nebula, on the other hand, is one when you see it, it's like, oh wow, that's awesome. You actually see the wizard. So check that out. If you've never looked at it that way, looking for a wizard, it's just awesome. It's a really cool shaped nebula. 
I mean, it might not be as obvious as the wild duck cluster, but uh, I think it's pretty good. So I'm up and running on the Wizard Nebula now. Uh, APT is firing away, or I should say the 268C is firing away with APT controlling it. I'm taking four minute exposures at that kind of the default DSO capture settings on the QHY268C, which I think is actually a gain of 102, but that's right around the suggested settings for this camera when capturing in narrow band. Speaking of the QHY268C, I've had this camera for a couple of weeks now, and it really has been uh, surprisingly painless to switch over from ZWO cameras that I was used to to this QHY. So even though they are very similar, they share a lot of these sensors, the sensor in the 268C, for those that didn't know, is the same one in the 2600 from ZWO, the ASI 2600. Uh, so very popular sensor and one that has just been, you know, really enjoyed by the astrophotography community since these cameras have come out. The QHY experience in terms of the drivers and the user experience and the software has been really painless. The only thing I can think of to knock this camera is that it does take a bit of time to cool down. Uh, it's maybe, maybe I got used to the, that Starlight Express mono camera and how fast it just dropped right down to minus 35. On these summer nights, I've been able to get the 268C down to minus 17, minus 19, and it does take probably about five minutes to get down there. So not a big deal, but if you do need to disconnect the camera and change some settings, uh, you're gonna need that time to wait for it to cool down again. So not a huge deal. It's nice when the camera's running and everything's running smoothly because then you can do other things and have that peace of mind knowing that uh, you're collecting your exposures in the background. And it gives me an opportunity to check in with you guys and share what's going on with my life these days. And there's a few things going on. First of all, one thing I'm pretty proud of is the fact that I've got back into running really hard. Um, it was something I used to do a lot and I kind of fell way off track in the last year or so. But of the last two months, I've been running hard. Uh, doing trying to do 10k a day so feeling so much healthier because of that when you're physically healthy you're also mentally healthy and that's been especially important this year with everything that's going on so that's a real positive change I've made in my life astrophotography wise I had some not so great fortune lately the hard drive on my nine month old computer failed and it's just the Seagate drive, the one terabyte drive in my desktop PC that actually I put all of my data acquisition and all of my process photos on. So the other drives that, uh, you know, that run the system and everything are fine. So the computer operates fine, but any time I try to access and I never know which folder it's gonna be, the whole thing just shuts down and the hard drive is making this weird ticking noise. So uh, luckily it's under warranty. It's an Asus desktop. Uh, but the process of getting that hard drive replaced is just going to be such a pain and there's going to be huge time between it. And that PC is the one that I use to not only process my photos, but also edit these videos on and uh, do tutorials and everything. So it's been a huge pain dealing with that. And uh, if you've noticed the content kind of slowed down a little bit, uh, that happened two weeks ago and I've just been dealing with that lately. So that kind of sucks. Uh, luckily, I do have another laptop. Uh, that's not as powerful at video editing that I can use in the meantime. I'm gonna need to get that hard drive fixed and most of the important files on that drive that's now failing, uh, I've been able to save, but I'll definitely lose some of the acquisition from this year. So it doesn't really bother me. I'm not huge on that. Like I can always capture new stuff, but anytime your, your hard drive fails on you, it's kind of a bummer. So with that being said, uh, the changes I'm making there is just getting better at backing up my data on multiple drives and in multiple places and including cloud storage, which I haven't done before, but it's just a smart idea. So I'm gonna start doing that. It is now quarter after one and I am lit up by that bright moonlight. So the Wizard Nebula went well. I got 33 sub exposures of four minutes long and uh, I'll stack that up. But uh, I've moved on now to the Helix Nebula. If you saw some of my previous videos, uh, specifically the Optolong L Extreme video, I already shot that one, but I just didn't have enough integration time for a great photo. So. Uh, I'm really looking forward to actually having a really presentable image of the Helix Nebula to share because I just love that nebula. So all in all, a really great night. It's funny, it's September now, even though it's early September, but 
The nights are definitely longer and cooler. I haven't worn a sweater out here in a while, so uh, it's a really enjoyable time of year for astrophotography. So I'll keep monitoring my exposures on the Helix Nebula, and at the end of the video, I'll share the Wizard Nebula process for sure, and uh, if I have an even better Helix Nebula to share, I'll, I'll share that as well. So as always, thanks for watching and clear skies.